Hello, my name is Oracle Laura, and I am a psychic as well as a medium. And today is a very special occasion on my show. This is the Oracle Laura Show, and I have a wonderful special guest with us today. He is a CEO of Hollywood Horror Museum. So we're going to talk all about classic old movies and spooks and haunts and everything ghostly. So I dressed up for this. I'm a little bit vampy today. And I would like you to welcome my very special guest, John Purdy. Welcome, John Purdy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so you are CEO of Hollywood Horror Museum. What is that like? Hollywood Horror Museum is unlike any museum that you've ever been to. It's uh, frightening, to be quite honest. For 70 years, the first 70 years of the genre, many of those sets and props and costumes don't exist anymore. So we brought together a team of Hollywood artisans who have faithfully recreated many of them. Plus, access we have access to collectors and private collections and studio collections from all over the world and Hollywood. And we gathered together about $10 million worth of materials to present as the Hollywood Horror Museum. Wow, that's quite an honor then. So um, now is this a an actual museum where people can go or is it more virtual or how does that work? Well, we're obviously in the middle of a pandemic, so we're not active at the moment. Right. But if the pandemic passes, there'll be two versions. There's a traveling version and a fixed site, which we believe to be in Hollywood, depends on what facility or venue is available at that time. Did you have a location prior to the pandemic? It's never been exhibited before other than bits and pieces at Comic Con and, and other conventions like that. Okay, so you said that it's a traveling show. Where Where is the farthest that you've traveled with it? We will have traveled. We have yet to travel. Okay, okay, so you will be making this traveling show. So can you give us an idea for those who don't know about your museum and haven't seen it before? Can you give them an idea of some of the examples of the exhibits that you have? You begin by entering what we call the ghost room. And there we share with you Mary Shelley and Bram Stoker's life stories and what brought them to fame and all of that. It's about a five minute educational experience accompanying visuals and so forth. Then, as we say in the themed entertainment business, something goes terribly wrong. And you're <laughs> you told the only way out is to go through hell. Okay. You begin the journey past life-size figures of Boris Karloff and Lon Chaney Jr. and Sr., Christopher Lee, others in their roles and costumes and in the sets. As you progress through all of that, it becomes more and more intense. And finally, you reach what we call a waypoint. And you're told, you, unless you're 14 years of age or older, you can no longer go further. You have to exit here. But if you choose to stay, you now enter what is very bloody. There's a lot of gore, sexual situations, and really scary, scary uh, exhibitions. Do tell, what's the scariest? What's the scariest? I can't tell you. <laughs> no? <laughs> That'd be giving it all away. That's true. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what's scariest to me is our horror extreme. And those are private tours late at night and our static figures are replaced by actual actors and personnel who leap out, obviously, and scare you and so forth. That, that's the exciting part. I could see how that would be really scary for some people. And that's fun for the actors as well. Yep. Yeah. Our, so, board of directors, our board of directors who helped formulate all of this back in 2016 include uh, those, those names that you know, uh, the John Carpenters, the uh, uh, Clive Barker, uh, Mick Garris, uh, Victoria Price, daughter of Vincent Price, and Sarah Karloff, daughter of Boris Karloff. Oh, wow. And others. So 
We have experts all around. That's great. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I haven't seen it myself yet, so that will be really wonderful. Um, what would you say are going to be the fans' favorites? Uh, you have, do you have Walking Dead, or was that just something I read about your no, bio have, that you had worked on? We have on? Walking Dead. Our big favorite is the Jack Nicholson character from The Shining. Right. And that, that, that we have toured to Comic-Con and other places. It's always a big draw. Yeah, The Shining is very popular. That's a Stephen King, yes. I believe, right? Correct. Do you have any others of his? Now, I know my favorite is Carrie, but I don't know if you have like anything from Carrie or any of the yes. other Stephen King. That's King's correct. Movies? And also, Shelley Duvall in her role. Okay. But every... every uh, <laughs> Every uh, aspect of horror is covered. It's, it's like no other exhibit ever put together before. That's so wonderful. So I noticed that you've got some images in behind you. Is that from some of the- There's uh, Jack from, now. <laughs> pardon me? Can you see? There's Jack Nicholson there. There's Shelley Duvall and others. Uh, I know for The Shining, I read his book as well as saw the movie and of course, it's yeah, it's a little bit different, the book, compared to the, right. the movie. Um, the movie has some some really interesting scenes, you know, like, especially, uh, I think that one of the more common ones, the twins, the, the, the girls, and then there's that the blood right. that goes through the lobby from the elevator, all that bloodbath sort of happens. Um, and then there's the scene, really. of course, of them in the, uh, in the room, you know. The room. And depending upon space and so forth, we have... Uh, some famous horror cars, uh, the Munsters car, for example, and uh, uh, Christine, the, the Plymouth Fury, from the Stephen King novel. Yeah, I was going to ask you, as soon as you mentioned cars, the first thing that came to my mind was the Christine. I never did find that movie uh, too scary for me. I mean, it takes a lot. I've seen it all as a psychic and a medium. I mean, it takes a lot to scare me. Um, so that movie in particular didn't didn't do that for me, but I know it's a really popular one, and the car would be recognizable. I've seen it on you know images of it every now and then on Facebook and and, and other social media. They'll show that car and right away. Of course, you recognize it. So that's great that you've got that car if you've got that included. And, and obviously, and with your skills, you see things that the rest of us don't. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm actually really good at predicting the outcome of movies, so it's hard for me to watch a movie and not know how it's going to end. <laughs> I can be a little bit annoyed in a movie theater. People usually get annoyed if I'm talking too much and predicting the scenes. I had one guy, he turned around and he gave me half and goes, hey, look, if you've seen this movie before, don't ruin it for the rest of us. And I was like, no, 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 I've never seen this before. <laughs> well, I, have a, I have a similar problem as a director. I focus on camera positions <laughs> and blocking and that sort of thing. And give us a, give the audience some, some uh, history on you, what, what else you've done and what, what got you into this? What got you to this point? <laughs> a lifetime, uh, beginning with uh, running the spotlight at the high school I attended. I went on to uh, a major in radio and television. Uh, I was Mike Douglas's original director, if you remember the Mike Douglas show. Uh, oh, wow. For the past 40 years, I had my own production company. Uh, we've toured uh, after, as James Cameron was concluding Titanic, he was discarding many of his sets in the, in the lot next door to the, uh, the shooting location in Ensenada. And uh, we just took trucks down and packed up what he didn't want and brought it back and put together an 80,000 square foot uh, salute, if you will, to Titanic, the movie and we're able to sink the ship every eight minutes. One of the interesting things was that you went up a gangplank after you went through the whole exhibition. And there was all of our uh, attendants were in costume. And he explained that uh, we're on the Titanic. It's a safe ship and nothing could go wrong. But as they say in themed entertainment, bad things happen, at which point the ground, the, set starts to shake and you're escorted around a corner we're pumping 400 gallons of water 
to a, a, an exhibition at the end, and then you turn and go into what we call disaster theater. It was a series of lifeboats, and we separated the men from the women and children, and we sank the ship every eight minutes. Um, it was frightening enough that it brought tears to many people's eyes. And of course, then as you exit, we brought you into 5,000 square feet of retail. So I also- well, I, have to, I have to agree with you about that scene because I know when I watched like Titanic, um, there's a lot of traumatic scenes and that one, that one definitely is the one that um, was most shocking for me. They showed a lot of detail. Right. A lot of detail um, on the people's death for that one. But as a woman, you were talking about, you know, props. Now, did you get the Titanic necklace? No. We also uh, toured uh, the last 40 years of Star Trek. Uh, we opened in Hyde Park in London with the Queen's permission. And it was 100,000 square feet of sets and props and costumes and music of Star Trek. And... Uh, as you went through that particular exhibit, you saw all of those wonderful props and you wound up aboard the Enterprise and you're under attack by aliens and the uh, force prevailed every day. <laughs> Who's your favorite character on Star Trek? Star Trek, of course, the captain, you know, the many captains actually. <laughs> be quite captain, honest. captain Kirk? Yes. Yeah. And, he, and he joined us uh, periodically and made appearances, did, as did uh, Major Roddenberry, the widow of Gene Roddenberry. And, oh, wow. Uh, and their son. It, uh, the, the exhibit was 138 semi-trucks, and we toured the world with it. How many trucks? 138. That's a lot. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine seeing that come into town. That would that would in itself draw people right away. They'd want to know who all those people are and what, what's coming. So that's a good way to advertise. <laughs> my, can you guess my favorite character of Star Trek? Uh, no, I can't. Spock, of course. <laughs> Spock. Oh, Spock. <laughs> Quite logical. I, I had the pleasure of working with him several times. Leonard, uh, mm -hmm. Leonard Nimoy, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Delightful man. I don't know how much you know about me and how much you researched me, but um, I predicted his death. Oh, you did? Yeah, like when he was going to die. And that one was sad because, like I said, he's my favorite. Not that I didn't like Captain Kirk, too, but um, and Bones, of course. But, and I, have to, I have to ask you, how am I doing? How are you doing? You've got a long way to go because you got to keep this show going. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going anywhere. I won't let you. <laughs> Do you know um, another interesting thing before I move on to another topic? Um, now that we're on the subject of Star Trek, I didn't know uh, until just, what was it, about maybe six years ago now. I didn't know until then that I was born on the day that Star Trek premiered on TV, the exact day. But the, I mean, about that? don't, oh, don't about calculate that. that. Don't, don't calculate, you know, the year. But <laughs> but I thought that was really cool because, in a way, I go where no man's gone before, too. <laughs> yep. One of my favorite career moments, we took 300 musicians and technicians to the Dominican Republic and a guy named Frank Sinatra. And uh, the night before the concert, we uh, uh, go up in Western, had a, uh, a coffee plantation down there. And the daughter of the, of the uh, CEO of Gulf and Western created this village. And they brought in Hollywood and the, the turn of the century village. And uh, the night before the concert in the auditorium, it's 5,000 seat auditorium or amphitheater actually that we built uh, Mr. Sinatra did the sound check and for me and six other people he did an hour oh. very very impressive well he, he's in the music industry so he would know sound quite well I could I could see that I could see that that's why he would do that hmm. name some other names let's Let's name drop here. Um, name some other famous 
actors or producers you've met? Well, the Douglas show we had, you know, every day was Celebrity Day, but a couple memorable moments where I got to spend a week with Louis Armstrong. Oh, I love him. And he would say, what do you want to hear, John? And I would get to pick the songs that he would do for the day. Wonderful. Arthur Godfrey was another interesting person to meet. Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand. I think she was 18 when I saw her. 18 at the time, wow. Yeah. But that, I, I don't know what age she was. She was probably in her 20s or when she did a Star is Born. Um, that would have been after, after you met her then, right? Yes, right, yeah. We actually, it was, it was interesting. Uh, she was so unknown when we attempted to do the, the show at that time originated out of Cleveland. And if they were performers, we would attempt to book them into one of the nightclubs so they can make more money for their time in Cleveland. And nobody wanted to book Streisand. Because nobody knew her. Yeah. yeah. Well, everyone's got that start, right? Yep. Now, now you just say the word Barbara and Barbara Streisand comes to mind, just her first name. Exactly. Exactly. That's how far she's come. So, um, what are some of the spooky experiences you've had yourself? Have you had any kind of hauntings or spooky supernatural kind of a situation yourself? Well, we've done over 5,000 commercials. That counts. <laughs> you it mentioned does. Bram Stoker earlier. Um, I guess that's what made me choose this theme to address. Uh, vampires have always been sort of a favorite of mine. Ghosts as well. Um, but Dracula, that movie, I always loved. Even the older ones. I watched yes, one of the right. ones from the 70s. And even back then, they were spooky. So, who's your favorite kind of a haunting character? Mine's Dracula. What would you say yours is? Kind favorite? of character? I'm sorry. Your 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 sort of villain, you know, from the horror movies. Who's your most favorite? The villain. Say? I spent some time in Romania. Uh, with the uh, Romanian government, we were go going to do a, a fixed exhibition of Dracula. So I got to see where Vlad the Impaler actually lived and and oh. and did his deeds, if you will. So I, I would have to be Dracula. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I figured. <laughs> about um i mean I, I wouldn't assume that you'd have too much about your your b horror clips but you probably have some of the old classics what what would you say some of the older exhibits you have some of the old movies like you have the, the old original mummy oh the mummy you know all of the all of the shows that you can name we have a, something representing them we're very faithful to, to pursue that because we want the fans to actually become immersed in this whole experience. Right, right. And it, all of this collection has never been on public display at one point. There's been bits and pieces scattered all over the world, but we brought it all together. As I said, there's over $10 million worth of uh, props and so forth. I just want to see that big lineup of trucks coming in. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's got to be a big collection. It's a lot of trouble to set up, um, especially with exhibits and having all those props. Uh, I used to go to, there's a, there was a, a prop guy in, uh, in Burnaby for years. And he had, he's met so many, so many producers and actors because he, he dealt a lot with the film industry when they came up here and they did a lot of filming up here. You know, we're called Hollywood mm -hmm. North up here in Vancouver. We're in Vancouver. Sure. Canada. And I used to be amazed at his warehouse where he had all these props. A lot of the films, they would just rent the props, but he yep. also would sell some. And his hallways, he used to take me into his office and we'd have talks and 
this hallway was just lined up with photographs of all these actors that he's met. And, but the props were just huge, you know. His, his warehouse was really high ceiling, and some of the stuff was like big sculptures and statues that were almost touching the ceiling, and humongous horse-drawn carriages. Yep. He had just the most amazing stuff. And it was sort of sad because a few years ago, he, he closed down. He had to shut down because I think yes. they were building something in that lot, and he had no choice. So he had to clear it all out. But it was the most wonderful place to go and just sort of be able to, let, in a way, in a way, like a museum, you know, being able to go there and enjoy that. So I can just imagine what it's like to be able to go. Um, I haven't been to a museum. I've been to, you know, Hollywood, Universal Studios and such. But I, other than that, I haven't been to the experience of what you offer people. And I think it's wonderful. I, I, I can't wait to see it. It's great. I, I'm nostalgic. I'm very, um, you know, sentimental, and I love the old classics. So I would just love it. What would you, um, what would you say to fans who are watching? What would you? I'm what sorry, my favorite. Wanna, what would you like to say to fans who may be watching? Fans of the old horror movies and people who might be interested in, in seeing the museum. What would you like to tell them? Their dreams have come true. So, what is your next step? What uh, what should we be waiting for? You say that you're going to be you're going to be taking the show we're on the road. Where can people yeah. find you, and what should they be watching for? We have a sister exhibition of science fiction materials that we're currently in negotiations to open in Las Vegas. I can't tell you much about it, other than uh, and again, we'll have the scope that the, the horror museum has, but only the, the genre is science fiction. So you, you can't say anything about it because it's still new and upcoming, but sci-fi sci is really popular. I could see yes. that being a good one. Yeah. If I could, um, I'm pretty sure you, you were already planning on it, but if we could have Alien, <laughs> some of Alien from that, that, that would be really good to see. Yep. I'd like to see the, you know, the original um, item they used for Alien. The, I don't know, did they use a... Was it a robot or was it a person wearing a suit? Both. 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 Depending on what they had to show, I guess, right? Hmm. Well, where can people find you? At uh, Hollywood Horror. Hollywood Horror Museum. And yeah. now I found you on Facebook. You have a website as well, right? Right. For both the science fiction and for the horror museum, yes. Is there any other social media they can find you on for those who say aren't on Facebook? Just primarily Facebook at this point. Yes. Okay. Well, I wish you luck, especially with the sci-fi one. That's going to be exciting. Thank you so much for being a guest on my show. And this is uh, John Purdy, the CEO of Hollywood Horror Museum. And this is Laura for Laura. Thank you so much for watching. And please, please check out his museum. I would love, I would love to see it myself. Thank you so much for being here, John. Standing invitation. Thank you.